Hi there, it's John Pushkar from Prefshin Technical Services. I'm here today with another episode to bring you some safety information related to the fuels and industrial combustion world. Today's episode is all about gas piping safety and especially focusing on purging processes. If you have someone today who's about to be doing some type of gas piping project, or you have a contractor starting a gas piping project, or an equipment installation project or modification, stop the video. Go out, find them, tell them to hold on for a few minutes because you've got some learning to do. Over the last 40 years, I've developed and led fuels and combustion equipment safety programs for the largest manufacturers in the world. Today, I'm bringing you knowledge, insights, and best practices about fired equipment and natural gas safety. Over the next few minutes, you'll get the kind of practical, real-life explanations that I've become known for. And today's message? Well, today's message is all about, are you prepared? Do you understand what purging is? Do you understand proper purging practices? Purging is the key for safe gas piping repairs. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, and if you think, well, piping, we've been doing piping around here, or I've hired a piping contractor, they must know what they're doing, then you're a little too naive about this whole topic. So just what is purging, anyhow? Well, purging is not just depressurizing a pipe and letting the gas out. No, purging means displacing that flammable substance with an inert substance, usually nitrogen. And there are specific rules about having a plan, having the plan safety validated, understanding where that gas is going and if it's getting dispersed, making sure there are exclusion zones so it can't get ignited. Then there are very important rules for how you bring something back into service. You see there's purging into service and purging out of service. If you bring flammable gases or natural gas into a piping system that's full of air, and it happens to encounter an ignition source, which can happen many different ways, guess what? You've created one heck of a pipe bomb. And the consequences of that are not gonna be pretty. So moving forward, please make sure that you at least take note and at least explore and understand the documents that I'm talking here about they were put together with teams of experts with hundreds of hours of collective experience. These are put together after there have been horrible accidents throughout the United States and the world. And believe me, these kinds of accidents occur almost every day. If you want to ignore this advice, that's fine. We live in a world today where being the supervisor or being someone in charge of this kind of a project and not taking the appropriate actions, well, guess what? that can make you a candidate for a manslaughter charge if something bad were to happen. It's happening more and more every day, and I could cite you a number of examples. This was deemed to be such an important topic that the U.S. Chemical Safety Board asked NFPA 54, the National Fuel Gas Code Committee, to enhance its chapters that had to do with purging and safe gas piping. This has been accomplished in previous versions of the document. The U.S. Chemical Safety Board also asked that a document be created to address high-pressure natural gas piping systems. That turned out to be NFPA 56. I'm on both of these committees. I have helped many industrial facilities and even utilities to navigate these documents and to create procedures and purging plans so that long into the future, they have a culture developed where they understand how to do safe gas piping repairs and new gas and flammable piping installations. The answer is to get yourself educated. Both of these documents are available online for free viewing at www.nfpa.org. I'm also providing for you here a short clip that has to do with two different Prescient Technical Services online school modules that I've created that address these topics. The first has to do with safe gas piping repairs, and the second has to do with a detailed review of codes and standards, which are NFPA 54 and 56, 
and taking out those sections that have to do with purging and isolation and other key points that you'll have to address and trying to focus in on them. What might seem like a very simple topic is actually quite complex. And at the end of the day, the life that you save, it may just be yours. Let's next talk about the purge part of item number two. You should know that there are three distinct kinds of purge processes. There's the slug purge, the dilute and dump purge, sometimes called a pressure purge, and there's a trickle purge. In the slug purge, I'm releasing a high volume of an inert substance like nitrogen. I'm wanting to have little mixing. I want it to be turbulent. I want a slug of this material to come down the pipe, and I want to push the other material out. I want to do it in one consistent movement. I don't want to stop in the middle of this because that would increase that mixed zone. And I want to force this material again out in one direction only, some section of pipe. The piping system configuration might look like this. I might have isolation on some section of pipe. I'm introducing nitrogen at a purge inlet area or purge inlet port, and I'm pushing it through and I'm discharging it to some other section. What you'll notice is I've got these purge inlet valves and then I've got this discharge location. These are called purge points. You should be designing piping systems from their installation with purging in mind. You don't want to have to be adding purge points. I've been on projects where they've had to hot tap in purge points and it's a very inconvenient, very costly measure. It's something simple to do if you're thinking about purging, again, during construction at the beginning of a project. In a dilute and dump purge, again, a, or a pressure purge, I might have a tank or a section of piping with no possibility to have some outlet fitting. So I might have this tank or this section of piping at zero or at atmospheric pressure. I pressurize it with nitrogen up to maybe 30, 40 pounds. I then, I then dump the mixture. I repeat this several times till measurements have shown that I've achieved the desired objective. In a trickle purge, I might have a slight positive pressure on the piping system using nitrogen just to keep air from getting in while maybe I'm doing some repair in the middle of this piping section. I might also use a trickle purge if there are residual materials in the piping system that I'm concerned could off gas when the piping system is down and laying dormant. I talked to you about having purge points designed into the system. This is a typical purge point I'm showing you on the right. This would be done with Schedule 80 nipples. I'm showing you here a threadalette that's been put onto this section of pipe with the Schedule 80 nipple, a ball valve, and then a plug. In most cases, in fact, for all of the purging jobs I've ever been a part of, you'll be using nitrogen as the inert substance to push through piping systems. Nitrogen purchases can take many forms, and you really need to have an understanding of how much you need. You can often get this help from the nitrogen supplier, but I wanted to at least give you some guidelines and some thoughts based on personal experience from many purging jobs. You can, of course, get a single bottle. You can get bottle packs. You can get tube trailers and you can get liquid nitrogen. I've used liquid nitrogen on jobs, and frankly, it's been a problem. I would really avoid it unless I had no choice. The liquid nitrogen container I'm showing you on the right-hand side has in it a vaporization coil around the outside. If you overdraw that vessel, you can actually get liquid nitrogen coming out of it, which can freeze the hose, the piping system. It could reduce the flow. It could damage things. I really recommend you try to stay away from using liquid with self-vaporizers. Tube trailers should only be used by the most experienced folks. They are high pressure, as I'm indicating there. They're for very large jobs. You could get a full trailer or what's sometimes called a pup 
trailer. Again, there's different volumes you need to talk to people. You may need to be operating valves on the back of the tubes. You may need to be renting regulators or some of the hose sections that could be exposed to very high pressures. You need to be careful as well in any purge job with regards to what the inert substance pressure is and what your piping system is rated at. You could do severe damage to piping systems and components. Remember that you're going to need nitrogen likely for the pre-repair purge, possibly for pressure testing of the piping system if it's to be a pneumatic pressure test, which you have to be very careful about. And in some cases you need permission according to ASME B31.3. You're then also going to need to do a post-repair purge to get oxygen out of the piping system. We'll be talking about this. You don't want to be bringing in gas on top of piping systems that are full of air that have oxygen because you're then creating a flammable mixture in the piping system. I'm showing you here on the left-hand side of this slide a connection between a special hose and a discharge from a high pressure compressor and it's showing a section of wire that's connected between the two of them. That's called a whip check or a wire restraint. You need to have these on high pressure hose systems in case the connection comes apart. There have been many people killed and severely injured from piping systems coming apart and whipping around and hitting people. I'm showing you right below my picture a special regulator you need to have high flow regulators to achieve slug purging, for example. And again, this might be something that you would have to rent. There, are, You're also seeing what some of the valving looks like on the back of a tube trailer. There are also special safety devices in place in case the trailer would start to roll away. There are wheel chocks required and other special considerations for where the trailer's parked. You might need to have some training on how to apply one of these before actually renting one. You must be very careful with your use of nitrogen. Nitrogen is something that 78% of every breath that we take, but one full breath of nitrogen and you could be dead. You must be cautious about any nitrogen discharges or leaks. You should be using personal monitors, four gas monitors, to determine whether or not you're in an area that's deficient of oxygen, you must fully train everyone who's going to be using or could be in an area where there's nitrogen present. The U.S. Chemical Safety Board has some great videos about nitrogen safety and about some of the tragic accidents that have occurred so innocently by people being around nitrogen. I'm providing those to you after this slide and I encourage you to watch them. Let's next take a look at chapter eight, where we'll be talking about purging out of service. Again, this would be a condition where the piping system is full of the flammable gas and we want to vent it, we want to remove the residual, and we wanna be able to possibly work on or modify that piping system. So chapter eight starts off talking about isolation and it talks about isolating the flammable gas supply and downstream piping. We've talked about OSHA 1910, the lockout tagout standard. Again, these isolation techniques should be described in the written procedure, but it's likely going to be double block and bleed or a blind. And then we also talk in 8.2 about charging with inert gas. And it says where existing gas piping is purged out of service, we'll be pushing out residual gas with an inert gas, which we've talked about is typically nitrogen. In 8.2.1.2, there are provisions for natural gas suppliers to be using their own written procedures. But in 8.3, when we're discharging purged gases, we're first going to be depressurizing, again, in accordance with the written procedure. We're only going to be depressurizing down to maybe some very slight positive Depending on the circumstances, there are times when I've done it that way just to prevent there from being the possibility of air being introduced into the system. And then it talks about the vent discharge from a piping system being depressurized shall be directly outside, again, as written by the purge procedure. And you've got to be very careful with the pressure you're starting with. Remember, some very, very high pressures can 
create plumes that can end up in places where you don't want them. If you haven't seen the six steps to safe gas piping repair module, I discuss plumes and models that can be used to determine threat zones. Again, it talks about in 8.3.3.1, this shutoff valve at the end of the piping system where we're discharging. It talks about monitoring, and again, this monitoring of the endpoint will be at some sample point or intermittent continuous monitoring as I've described it. It talks about the flow of inert gas being continuous. So that's consistent with a slug purge type of purge. There are also pressure vent purging processes. Again, I've described them in the six steps to a safe gas piping repair module. And in 3.3.3.4, in some cases, folks purge out all the nitrogen, depending again on the circumstances and what you're gonna be doing in the piping system, understanding how dangerous nitrogen can be. They're looking for you to make sure that you displace all of the inert gas until you've got 19.5% oxygen by volume. Hopefully you found something here of value that you can pass on to friends or coworkers. If you can, please hit the like button and share this video. And I'd also like to invite you to the Prescient Technical Services Online School, where you'll find more than 20 modules that I've created from knowledge I've acquired over the past 40 years, traveling over 3 million miles and being in and out of more than 300 industrial plants in 12 different countries. So once again, thank you very much for being here. It's my mission to pass on important life-saving information I'll be releasing one of these videos just about every week. And if you could subscribe in the link below, I'll make sure that you get first notice of every time a new video comes out. Once again, thank you and please have a safe day. Neither Prescient Technical Services Inc. or John R. Pushkar, the presenter and author of this work, warrant or represent expressly or by implication, the correctness or accuracy of the content of the information presented. The user or viewer of this work accepts any legal liability or responsibility whatsoever for the consequences of its use and misuse.